Welcome back everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Mr. S with the Chess with Mr. S School and today we're going over a really exciting game covering the fried liver attack between two grandmasters. This game is lots of fun, very tactical, super aggressive. Stay tuned, lots of fun chess ahead. Alright, so today's lesson is a game between Alexei Shirov, who was playing for the white pieces, and his opponent, Serenis Soskis, who was playing for black. Both players are grandmasters. This game was played in 2014, and it was a fried liver attack game, which is always super aggressive, hyper tactical, and tons of fun. Now, if you've never seen a fried liver attack game before, I strongly encourage you to watch one of our earlier fried liver explained videos, which covers the very basics for both white and black. Now, if you do know what the fried liver is, I hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. It really helps the channel a ton, but also welcomes new faces to chess. All right, let's get into the game. We have e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop c4. This is the Italian game. Now black plays knight to f6, which is a good move, but it does block the queen from defending g5, which allows white to play the knight attack, knight g5. Now the knight and the bishop are both aiming at f7, so black should play d5, which blocks the bishop from attacking the f7 square. White to play, how should white continue? If you said bishop captures, I strongly recommend you watch our earlier fried liver explained video. The correct answer is pawn takes. If bishop takes, it's a big mistake. Now black to play, and if you'd like to avoid the fried liver attack entirely as black, the best move here for you would be knight to a5. This stops the fried liver attack immediately, and white plays bishop to b5, checking the king, pawn c6, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, and here white normally would retreat to, to d3, which makes a, a square for the knight to go to in case black plays h6. So knight goes to e4, knight takes knight, bishop takes knight, and this game is kind of balanced on both sides. Now if you do play the fried liver, which is theoretically not bad for black, and if black plays all the perfect moves consecutively, it might even be better. But it's so hard to do that. And as human players, I find it really, really hard for a, a player to make all the perfect moves, like 15 moves in a row. So I do encourage you to play the fried liver as white, as you'll likely have better chances to win. All right, black takes the pawn on d5, and here Shirov captures on f7. So Saranis Solskis captures back with his king, because the knight, of course, was forking the queen and the, uh, the rook. So king comes out to f7. Now the king is underneath the bishop, excuse me, underneath the, the knight that's pinned by the bishop, I should say. So now it's white to play. How do you continue here? The correct move is queen comes to f3. Check. Now if black does anything other than king comes to e6, I want you to take your bishop and take the knight on d5. So if black plays king g6, king g8, king e7, king e8, or even queen f6, doesn't matter which one, Bishop still takes the knight, and this way you'll be ahead no matter what. So the only correct move for black here is king goes to e6. Now the king is underneath the bishop diagonal, so put pressure on the pin piece. The move is knight goes to c3. Now we're putting a, a lot of pressure on this knight on uh, d5, and black only has two defenders, so the only way for black to continue is bringing in another defender. The move is knight b4. You could also bring the knight back to e7, but this is a bit more passive and not normally played. b4 is a bit more aggressive, and as many of you can already tell, the knight is attacking c2 and threatening to do a fork as well. Now, in the game, white played a different move that I'm going to recommend right now. So first, I'm going to tell you what I recommend. Generally, it's not the best move, but it's a very easy to understand move, and you can apply this in your games, and likely you'll be winning anyway, as your opponent probably won't find the consecutively correct moves back to back to back to back. So you'll have a very good chance of winning the game. I recommend just king d1. It's very simple, very easy. The idea is rook comes to e1, pawn goes to d4, bishop gets to come outside. But you've got to kick out the knight on b4 first. So typically after king goes to d1, uh, black might play a move like pawn c6. Now you play a3, kick out the knight, and when the knight runs, now bring in the rook. Now afterwards, if black plays the best move, the best move here is knight c7, and again, it's kind of tricky to find all these moves, white still has pawn d4. And now it's coming for the black king, and it's very tricky for black to find the best move. If you did find the best move, 
Well, congratulations. It's kind of tricky to find it here. The best move is queen f6, trying to trade off pieces. And even here, it's not terrible for white. It's not the best, but it's not awful. And so here, white can play a move like rook captures and then black will run away. And the game can continue with queen to e2. And I don't want to go through all the different lines here, but it just um, serves to say that Black has to find the absolute best moves, even in this spot, which is very tricky. Anything other than that, and you're going to be winning right away. For example, if you play d4, your opponent doesn't know what to do. Let's say they play a move like h6 or something. You're going to have a very easy time here. Now rook goes to uh, e5, and you're crushing. So it's usual, usually very tricky for Black to find the best moves. So I do encourage King to d1. However... If you want to play super aggressively, then you'll play a move like a3, encouraging your opponent to take the pawn on c2. This will gain you one tempo because black will take. And then king goes to d1 and now black will take the rook. So by using this extra turn that you get, since black made a knight move, then another knight move, now you can go in for the attack. Knight takes on d5, and the knight is no longer defending this square, or the black knight, I should say. So here you can capture it, and black has to move the king. If black doesn't move the king here, for example, let's say black plays a really, really bad move, like pawn to h6. Here you're winning right away. Knight moves out of the way because the bishop can check the king, so knight b6. Now king runs away. Now white to play check on f7. Black runs away and now check again on d5. Black runs away and now white takes on e5. Check again. Black blocks and white takes and this is mate. So if black sees that you captured, of course black has to stop this with king move anywhere because the bishop is underneath the, uh, the king. So black will play something like king d6. Now it's white to play. What to do? And in the game, white play pawn d4, attacking the black king. Now again, he's not just attacking the pawn, he's going after the king. Every move here is just attacking the king, figuring out ways to break into the king. So you're just looking for all the different ways that you can go after your opponent's king and avoid him uh, or, or stop him from getting into safety. All right, we have bishop goes to e6 and white played rook goes to e1. Now black to play, and honestly here, I encourage you to write the answer below in the comment section if you can find one. But what should black play? It's really tricky. Can you find a good move for black here? Because we've gone through the engine a whole bunch of different ways and every move, it leads to some sort of problem. It's very tricky here to find the best answer. So for example, let's try c6 with the pawn. Now it's white to play, white takes on e5 and after pawn captures, rook says check. Now here black, let's just say hypothetically captures, queen captures and now king goes on the run. Bishop at four check, again, just chasing the king. Bishop will block or queen can block, and then you still do the same thing. Queen goes to c5 check, and after the king runs, in this case, it'll lead to mate. So after check, queen has to block and then check, and then king has to run. Now you pin the king, sorry, pin the queen, and after your opponent captures, this will lead to mate very quickly. We'll just go over the moves very fast. Here we have check again, and our opponent has to run, check, and after just a few, few moves, we hunt the king, bring him downstairs, and now we get checkmate. Okay, so this is one such example after pawn c6, but what else can be done? So let's say black doesn't play pawn c6. Instead in this spot, black plays say h4 with the queen, now attacking on h2. Well here again, rook just cap goes to e4, excuse me this time, and then later after queen captures, rook captures on e5, if check, rook goes down, and again, white is just better. I would rather be white here. This is just much easier to play. So I encourage you, if you can find a good move after rook e1 to stop white's onslaught of attack, please write it in the comment section below. I'd be happy to go over it for you. Okay, in the game, uh, Alexei Shirov's opponent, uh, Saranis Solskis, played pawn b5. Now white to play. Pawn b5 is an exceptionally mm, not such a great move. I should be a little kinder here. If I were playing for black, I don't know if I'd find any better move. Um, this creates a weakness for c6. So now the queen can get to c6. Of course, not right now, but after knight goes to b4. So now the queen is aiming on the c6 square, sacrificing the bishop, but hunting the king, which is sort of in line with the theme of the fried liver attack. So black played pawn captures and queen goes to c6, checking the king. Now black to play and what to do, so he has to run. And now white to play, and I hope you guys can find the next move. The move is... 
Bishop goes to g5, checking the king. This gets a skewer, since like a shish kebab, we're skewering to the queen. So the king has to run away, and now we collect the queen. And this is so much better for white now, after rook captures, white to play, and white continued with check, capturing the pawn on c7. Black has to block, and white captures yet another pawn. This just weakens the black king, and as you can see, black's pieces are just not working together. The knight is on a1, really not doing much. The bishop and the rook are just trying to defend the poor king's life, and the bishop and the rook here are just sleepy, lazy couch potatoes. So now it's black to play, and black plays rook d6. White to play, and white now plays pawn goes to d5, attacking the bishop some more. Black plays bishop goes to d7, and now white to play, and check on f4. Black runs back to g8, and white can see this black king is so badly placed because all we need is this diagonal. So, of course, the next move here is queen captures on c4. Now, all we really need to do is to push this pawn. If we can push this pawn, it's pretty much game over. So, let's see if we can figure out a way to do that. Black here plays pawn goes to a5. The idea is to bring the pawn to a4. This will make a little escape hatch for the, uh, for the knight because then the pawn will be able to defend this uh, b3 square. It's not that important, though, because the black king is really in trouble. White here plays knight goes to d3, and black plays pawn a4. Congratulations, your knight can come outside, but your king is in terrible shape. White plays knight goes to c5. The idea here is to capture the bishop, and once the rook takes back, you can push the pawn, getting a discovered check. Now, this discovery will likely lead to a mate, so black plays pawn h5, giving a little fire escape, and hopefully in the future even uh, getting, his, getting his rook into the game and making it active. White does proceed with the same plan, captures on uh, d7, and black captures, and so what's the next best move? I'm sure you all saw already. Pawn goes up to d6, checking the king, and now black runs for his life. Now here there's a few good moves that you can make, and white decided to go for the best move, which is rook e6. There are some other moves you can make. If you want to play really simply, you can just capture on a4. There's nothing really wrong with this. And white is already winning here. The knight is just doomed and the rook's under attack and the pawn's almost about to make a queen. And you're just winning anyhow. So there's nothing wrong with this move. So if you saw that, great move. But if you didn't and you'd rather play a, a maybe a more powerful move or attacking your opponent's king, the better move here is rook e6. This does go after your opponent's king. So you're covering the sixth rank here. Now black to play, and black plays g6, and white to play after rook takes g6, black decided to re uh, resign the game. And the reason for that is if black does continue, say he captures the rook, queen goes to e6 check, king must move, and now we capture the rook. Now I'm going to go over the simplest way that white could have won the game. After, say, bishop blocks, we come in for another check. Black runs away, another check, black runs up, and now we just push the pawn. And the idea is simple. Just get the queen to e8. It doesn't matter if the rook takes. So, for example, if knight comes to b3, queen goes to d8, uh, e8, excuse me, and if rook takes e8, then pawn takes back, and now you're way ahead. So there's absolutely no way your opponent can stop you. So a very, very good game. A lot of exciting stuff in this game. I really hope you enjoyed this game. Uh, and you will try the fried liver attack yourselves. If you have any questions at all, please put it in the comment below. I really, really enjoyed uh, teaching and covering this game for you. And please remember to hit the like, share, and subscribe video or icon, excuse me. And thank you very much again for watching. Bye-bye, everybody. I'll see you all again next week. Bye, guys. Hey, everyone. Thanks again for watching today's video. If you like the video, please share with your friends and family, and please remember to hit that like and subscribe button as it really helps the channel. Until next time, please remember to practice and have fun.